And now Chidwick, McQueen eight, has the open ender against Parks Aces. Over at this table, we've got an economics degree, a business degree, a psychology degree, an East Asian studies degree, an MBA in finance, an electrical engineering degree, an industrial engineering degree, and then you've got Stevie Chidwick, who probably has them all covered money-wise. <laughs> Actually, Park, who has the aces right now, a Columbia University grad along with Richard Lee. Yeah, two Columbia University grads at the same table on day five of the main event. You know, I thought that school was only known for its football program. That's amazing. <laughs> so to catch you guys up, uh, Chidwick defended the big blind and then check raised this flop on total air ball and then turns just the amazing seven to give him an open ender. It gets called by the aces. Stephen Chidwick still wanting here. That is not going to help Chidwick bluff this. Park with basically pot left in his stack. Chidwick prefers the smaller high roller fields and the strategies amongst everyone who is on an equal footing. But once he gets deep in a large field tournament, he just has a ball. Oh, wow. And, and Chidwick is going to put them all in. I, I mean, Ace is a card where it does change things a lot of the time, and, and Park may fold his queens and kings, but uh, we see he improve to a set. Henry Park does make the quick call. And the South Korean now living in Las Vegas with a monster double up. Up to almost 4.7 million. And then Baby, coming in December, is going to need a lot of new shoes, and that could help out. Man, just like, look at this hand, though. Stevie just puts max pressure on all the time. Check races, flop, barrels through turn, jams river for pot. If, if you're Park and you have uh, an over pair that wasn't aces, you, you probably hit the muck. Dyke raising all in over the Chidwick open. Seems we have a begrudging call, heads, tails. Good luck, gentlemen. Yeah, it's going to be the ace 10 suited against the two sevens. Dan Dyke all in for his main event tournament life. We have a stand up, fair enough. All in in the main, day five. Georgia Tech grad, if you hadn't already guessed that, father of three into fantasy football and racquetball, lives in Winter Park, Florida, 41 years of age, and in need of help on the King King Deuce board. 100,000 in career tournament earnings. Five on the turn isn't going to help him. And neither is the eight of clubs. So to the rail goes the Georgia Tech Sports Hall of Famer wow. who served as a punter for the team between 1999 and 2002. Strong. Dan Dyke. Good game, sir. Day five. What a run. A developing situation over at our secondary feature table where Keith Lear finds himself all in. And unfortunately, he is up against the pocket aces of Stephen Chidwick. Yeah, no, well, that he is, Ali. Good luck, boys. Smile on Keith's face with the 10-9 suited. Lear with 20 bigs in the hijack. How did this one go down, Ali? Was this a three-bet, four-bet jam, perhaps? Not entirely certain how we Fair got enough, here. Fair enough, but we are here. Lear needs some help. Yeah, we are in need of assistance. Put the Jack of Diamonds out there for me. That would be a six foot. Keith asking for the sopping wet Jack of Diamonds on the turn. Instead, he gets a king and still needs a Jack. 
which is now the only card which will rescue him from elimination here in the main. And it isn't there. Game, Keith. Nice hand. To the locker room goes Keith Lear. Well, an all-time legend in, in the form of Mr. Lear. Great run, buddy. Unbelievable stuff. Former 25K heads-up winner. Cash game extraordinaire. Plays a little gin. Good game, sir. As well. We're going to send it over to our secondary table again. Yes, it is. Where we find an all-in involving Stephen Chidwick. Richard Lee. Who has what, Ollie? He has the okay. king, queen of clubs. Good flop for Lee. against the ace, king. Chidwick open to a buck 10. Lee three bet to 350. And then Chidwick four bet him all in. Lee in a world of hurt pre, but does have some hope in the form of a nine or an ace. Seven outs once to carry on. Not there. Chidwick just sending people back in nice hand, man. late day Thank five the evening in the desert. <laughs> Casualties of war. Mr. Lee, fantastic run, buddy. I mean, hold your head high. Swinging it back over to our secondary feature table. It was Chidwick who opened the button with the five deuce suited to 110K. Picked up both Oliver and Weezer. A round of checks on the Queen Jack Trey board. Chidwick had the flush draw, didn't follow through with it, and now faces a bet and a call of 100,000 in front of him. Oliver's two fours are actually the best hand right now. Weezer wants to take a peek at the river open ended. This is highly interesting from Stevie taking the very baby clubs, which is a fairly thematic idea in general. The tiny cards doing cool stuff and. And coming with this delay of sorts, beautifully executed there. Take it down, sir. How are we able to execute in that manner without being concerned about three jacks somewhere in front of us? King, We're King. Raised 130. Just north of men. Cowboys saddle up. Here's Mr. Wall is just off for a walk. We're on to Chidwick uh -oh. straight away. Uh-oh, indeed. Just north of 40 bigs for the essential cutoff, given at least we think Wall was not at the table, or hijack, rather, for O'Nickel. Chidwick coming with a three bet. 425. And... <coughs> Steven with the understandable three bet. Back over to the opener. How will he react? These are the questions. Does he come with call, click up four bet, or just even perhaps a sort of late in the main jam? 42 bigs to start the hand for him. Chidwick with about 86. Well, Nyko looks composed, kind of ready for the moment, if you will. Familiar sight here. Oh, yeah. In we go. And Chidwick knew exactly what he was going to do in the event that his opponent went all in. And oddly enough, you'd think it was an Eichel who had the two jacks after that physical reaction. It's just the wow. nerves because he is the one at risk despite having the best hand. And we have seen some pretty bad beats. Might this be yet another in favor of Stephen Chidwick. Only time will tell with 5.2 million hanging in the balance. The flop, 6-4 deuce, squeaky clean for the two kings. 
That's what Ben Armstrong thought with two aces against Jax. Oof. Before Robert Cowan hit the jack on the turn. Not this time, but one pull still for Chidwick to send a man packing. 5.2 out there. Can O'Neill hang on? Yes, he can. Okay. And what a double up it is for him. Nice. Yep. Thank you. Chidwick bucks are tough to acquire. And skipping over the feature table, we go back to our secondary, where a pot is brewing between Stephen Chidwick and George Holmes. Jack 3-3, three, three, Chidwick pulling off the improbable, hitting his side card to put himself well in front of Holmes, who is following through for 400,000. And is promptly getting raised. 850,000. I think given the way Holmes navigated the 10-10 prior against Chidwick, this could very well be going in. Well, Chidwick has sort of announced his commitment here with this right. raise and induces Holmes to put the rest of it in there almost on his behalf. So Chidwick poised to double. You see Holmes getting the bad news. 4.2 almost in this pot. Indeed poised, dodging the king, Ali. Huge turn in river coming. Chidwick all in. Turn brings a 10. Now Holmes has a path to Broadway, so a queen or a king would do it. Stephen Chidwick's tournament life hanging in the balance needs to fade. And he's done that. Bravo, sir. 4.2 going Stevie's way. 